ok slash x slash so I have a story to tell. Back when I was 13 I had a stepfather who I was not particularly fond of. He was sorta creepy, I always thought he was kind of a jerk, and my friends wouldn't want to stay at my house because he was always kinda a drunk and like I said sorta a creep. But then one night after he was belligerently drunk I was fed up and told him that me and my mom didn't want him around anymore and that I hated his guts and that we all would rather he be dead. And the next morning me and my mom found out he went and committed suicide by shooting himself in his truck on some country road. For years after this I felt like total shit because I knew it was my fault he killed himself. I mean I didn't really like him but I would never want someone to go as far as suicide. I carried this grief around with me for several years until about 9 months ago while I was driving down the road at night. It was dark out and I was driving down the road and I was the only car for a little ways. Then a train coming from the other direction came and sort of blinded me with its lights. I squinted and continued to drive through and suddenly I felt cold and eerily not alone. I look in my rear view mirror and there I see my dead stepfather sitting in my backseat. I was immediately stricken with fear and had to pull over immediately but I still kept seeing his image there in my mirror. Finally after being pulled over for a moment and starting to panic and frantically cry I finally mustered up enough courage to ask what this spirit wanted. My stepfather spoke to me and said that for many years he was upset with me but he finally had come to terms and wanted me to know that he was no longer mad at me and that it wasn't my fault. After that he just disappeared. After a few moments of shaking I finally made it back on the road. So slash x slash have you had any similar experiences with the dead? Slash x slash, I've never really came to this side until I experienced something I can't explain nor understand and now I'm curious if any of you can help me understand WTF. Here's the story. This all started a few months ago on November 5th when myself and three others decided to grab a few cocktails and sit around bullshitting. The night started off easy enough, myself and Feminon A, start off the drinking and make a few shots and start feeling alright. We make some shots for Feminon B and Anon A. Night is progressing quickly but we're keeping a decent sobriety. Only drinking, we're not doing any other drugs or narcotics at any point during this night. We make some dinner and have a few more shots, standing in the kitchen bullshitting. I got a little excited with my beer and spilt some on the floor. I start mopping it up, but kinda stumbling a little bit, my buddies all laughing at my singing and lingo, while mopping, we end up standing perfectly dead center of the room in a circle. I'm holding the mop and looking around at everyone smiling, Feminon B to my right, Feminon A right in front of me, Anani to my left. I look over to Feminon B, and see this pale little girl come floating out of the back washroom, about 7 or so feet away, into the kitchen directly at me. She appeared to be running but was moving at just a quick and walking pace, her hair was a silky gloss jet black and it was floating in the air as if the wind was blowing directly into her. She came right at me, but in my drunken state I thought it was actually Feminon be just joining us so I went to hug her and laugh with her. I distinctly remember the feeling of my hand against her shoulder, but I pushed her into Feminon A and I didn't see the small pale girl with black hair again till much later into the night. I say nothing about the matter because it all happened in a second and I was drunk so I kinda just didn't care and moved on. After that though, things started getting worse. We stopped drinking, shortly before I saw the girl, after a little while passed I start blacking out for a few moments at a time. This is normal to being drunk, however I've been drunk before and to what I had that night, I usually need about 4 times more before I even come close to start blacking out, but I was right at the point where this I seemed significant to note. I was sitting on the couch right across Feminon B, I suddenly got freaked out and ran to grab her to get her out of the way of something. Of what, I don't remember, as soon as I stood up I blacked out. I came to on the other side of the room, hunched over with my back against the front door. Anon B thought I was trying to attack her and tossed me across the room, when I came to I looked to my right looking into the far corner of the second living room where a door leading into Feminon A's room is, and saw the dark grey silhouette of a man with his back facing me and his head hunched over. I stared at him for a while noticing the black and grey definition of this black shadow's body. It never moves. 
Anon B. Comes over kinda slapping my face as if to gently get my attention, I look back and the silhouette is gone. Anon B. Picks me up and starts laughing at me, by this time I've started mumbling slurs and keep ranting, but no one can make any sense of what I'm saying, and I can't stop it. While he's laughing in my face, I barely catch a glimpse of this large nasty looking figure standing behind him in the corner of the main living room, the figure kinda looks like the guy in the picture I posted. I say kinda very loosely because I've searched for a long ass time to find anything that looks like what I saw, but nothing really comes close at all, except that, kinda. The thing I saw was built like the guy in the picture, but stood maybe 7 feet tall, heavy in muscle and definition, same body type E legs, torso, bull face, extension, but the horns were long, and extended perfectly straight parallel to the floor, the shoulder were thick in a short coarse orangish black hair, the skin was extremely tough, I could only compare it to the skin of a gorilla palm, and of course the bull-like face and snout. This figure just stood there, his eyes were pitch black except for the pupil, the very center was a sharp crisp silver. I see this figure in the corner for only a second while Anan A is shaking me. I shake Anan off me and stumble around the main living room a little bit and reassure Anan that I'm fine and we're back to having a good time. I stumbled about halfway into the kitchen then turn around, I black out shortly after seeing this large shadow with an overcoat and hat on, standing half an arm's reach in front of me looking down on me. I come to again by the door being cradled by an on B, our backs against the door, I'm mumbling again. I can hear screaming from within feminine B's room, noble and on B runs in to find out what's going on. Something takes control of me, and I can feel myself picking myself up, and I'm looking through my eyes, but as if looking through the windshield of a car. I mumble, we need to get out of here then I start getting louder, but blacked out again. I come to convulsing on the floor, I can feel my body being tossed, and pulled along the wood floor. I look at the front door and I see a horde of what I can only barely resemble as people attempting to break in through the door but they're pushing as if the front door weighs tons, their arms reaching in through the small opening and I can make out one's face. I feel myself quickly leaping up and slamming against the door, I'm bracing the door with everything I have, and punching anything that breaks through the crack. In the back I can hear Feminon be yelling, don't let them in, don't let them get me. I'm fighting at the door for what feels like an hour, when I can hear myself scream out in a completely unfamiliar voice, we need to leave now. Everyone comes running out from the back room, I'm struggling to breath. Everyone gathers in the living room, and I brace up against the door exactly like I was trained in the Navy to breach a room. I quickly swing open the door tapping everyone's shoulder, I was watching myself moving as if I was back on the special ops with my team, leaving the building we just tore though. I'm last man. Everyone stops on the front door step, Feminine B is right in the doorway, I grab her shoulder getting back in, what I'm picturing as a stack, keeping close and tight. I turn to grab something off the couch right next to the door. I don't remember what it was I saw, but everyone that was standing in the door said they heard me scream, like they've never heard anyone scream before and tossed what I had just grabbed into the corner of the second living room then I screamed, get out get out get out. And shoved everyone out of the doorway. We drive off. Anon B has only had a beer and by now is even more sober to drive. Feminine A and I are in the back seat, both acting strange, when I was back there though I didn't see Feminine A. What I saw was a thin stickly female with greasy gloss black hair. I spent most of the while trying to see her face. I was obsessed with seeing her face and she fought to no end to keep it covered. I reached out and grabbed her chin forcing her to look at me, her face was a pale grey wall but perfectly smooth, until I looked closer to her eyes where her face began to crack and show utter blackness. Right before I got to see her eyes, she jumped and turned away from me, curling up in the corner hiding in the fetal position. I looked forward to see Feminine be staring right at me, watching us, and I mumbled to her it's not Feminana anymore. It's not her. We need to kill this thing. More things went down before they dropped me off at my residence, and I passed out but I'm going to skip ahead to get more to my point. Feminine B comes over the afternoon after, upset with me about the night before, I didn't remember anything at first. I woke up feeling like I was in a brawl the whole night, or like I had been scrapping with a bunch of different people, I even checked from bruises and cuts but to find none. I asked her what had happened and that I seriously felt like I was just fighting everyone last night, 
she starts to tell me some things about how I was acting but I didn't recall any of it. Over the next few nights we piece everything together and I start remembering the night in extremely vivid detail, so vivid that I can actually picture everything. I had this unshakable feeling that someone was with me even, not like just around a buddy or something, it felt like I was accompanied by someone I had a deep, deep connection with and was on my side. I could only compare it to having my police patrol partner right behind me, on my right side. This feeling persists for a few weeks, I can't look into mirrors without feeling overwhelmingly uncomfortable, and I get fatigued quickly and keep zoning off hardcore. Here's where my questions start coming in. Ever since that night, fairly consistently about three to six nights a week, I'll have intense vivid nightmares that take place in areas I've never seen, with people I've never seen, and the weirdest thing is that during the dreams, I'm perfectly comfortable seeing these images and scenes that would normally freak me the hell out, but in my dream I'm actually perfectly content. It's once I wake up and the images are still running through my head that I get freaked out. So my questions are, what I see in my dreams, similar to what I saw November 5th, anything you paranormal people discuss regularly? Is there anything significant about what I saw and felt? What's the connection with my dreams and the feeling of someone I'm partnered with who follows me around so closely? Anyone else experience this? Can anyone confirm or deny what I saw that night? The girl you described. I don't know if you're chupping my copper with this story, but when I was young, one night I was having strange nightmares, more than the usual ones, I woke up during the night. After a short while I decided to venture downstairs for something to drink. While I was filling my glass from the sink I caught something unusual in the corner of my eye and turned to investigate. There was a woman about 5 feet 5 inches with jet black hair, wearing a white dress. She was completely filthy from head to toe and she looked like she could have been a heroin addict, and knowing my father's drug habits and knowing his dirtbag friends that's exactly what I assumed considering she was just standing there, facing the silverware hutch in the corner, just sort of vacantly looking around the room. So not thinking twice I went back upstairs to inform my dad that someone was stealing our valuables, but as I turned the hall corner to his room, I don't remember anything except waking up in bed the next morning. About three to four nights after my grandmother, whom we lived with at the time, awoke screaming one night, and she had described the same thing it seen, only this time she was floating over top of her bed face down, just staring at her. MFW Chuppin My Cabra So this isn't a very scary or in-depth ghost story, but I've been thinking about it since it happened and I thought I'd share. Saturday night. Take GF to pick related, Brenton Lodge. Waiting in line outside, taking in the sights. Looking at beautiful night sky with GF, other couple. Motion out of the corner of my eye, look up at third story window just in time to see a form slip under the right hand corner of the window. Look like old yellowed silk, but was translucent at the same time. My mind interpreted it as an arm in an aged silk dress pulling itself back into the room through an impossibly tiny crack between window and frame. Nobody else saw it, gf, other people in crowd amused, nobody taking it seriously. Rest of wait uneventful, laser focus on window but nothing else happens. Get inside, average to fun haunted house tour, actors into their roles, still kinda corny. Make my way up to second floor, aiming to get up to third floor room ASAP. Get told not even staff allowed on third floor. I'm not saying it had to be a ghost but freak. Nobody was up on the third floor that night and my mind still can't quite comprehend what I saw. In the pickets the upstairs window visible between the tree branches on the left. I usually go on slash out slash and slash k slash but after what happened last Thursday and Friday I feel this needs to be taken here instead. Sorry if this is long but I want to get everything down while it is still fresh in my mind in case I'm going to have to give a statement soon, which may be the case. A little background on me, 27 years old. Pretty much raised as a woodsman slash survivalist slash hunter. Grandfather would. Take me into the bush every chance we got for hunting, fishing, trapping, tracking, general living off the land type deal. Now my father on the other hand is more involved in emergency services. So I was also raised around incident command. Medical first response, blah blah boring stuff. Due to my upbringing I naturally ended up becoming a dedicated volunteer with the local ground search and rescue unit when I turned 18. 
after only a year I was made team captain slash instructor. Between this and my former job I have seen murder, suicide, and accident victims in all states of pieces, rot and decay over the years. You get pretty tough skin having to deal with that crap. I thought that I could handle anything, I was wrong. Names have been changed and the area will not be mentioned due to confidential info. I'll just say we are northeast in North America. Around 1 a.m. Thursday morning we had a call out for a missing native hunter who didn't return home after leaving to drop a few bags of apples off at his deer blind. We get calls like this a lot and most times either the person ended up getting a deer and staying the night to pack it out in the morning, or worse had a heart attack while dragging heavy apple bags. We all meet up at the local mall, and hop on our transport bus as the location is about a 3 hour drive away. We get there at roughly 6 am, and while most people are helping to set up the mobile command post, my team, I lead the main hasty team, we go in first is getting the low down on the situation before heading in the bush. Man is about 40 years old, has a .303 rifle, and has been hunting this area for most of his life. I think that is pretty strange, usually local natives are great in the woods for navigation and 40 is a little young for a heart attack, but I have seen it happen. My team of five started to head in where the man's truck was parked on the side of an old logging road. There is me, Jen, Sean, Stephen, and Kyle. We all have wilderness backgrounds and were selected for the hasty team because we have proved ourselves time and time again to be the elite ones in our ragtag team of volunteers. Each one of us carries basic survival gear, an advanced med kit, and electronic and old school navigation tools. The hunter's family and friends had provided us with the exact UTM cords for his deer blind so we were going to head straight there first. Roughly noon now and by the looks of the GPS we are almost at the deer blind. We are in a line search formation, each one spread roughly 10 feet apart. Suddenly we hear a scream, it sounds like a woman being stabbed in a slasher flick. The two searchers on either side of me instantly break line and come straight to me. I reach for my radio to call in what we heard. Damn thing isn't working, all feedback brand new fancy $1,400 real-time tracking radios and they aren't worth shit. Screw it, I make a decision and tell the others come on and we start pounding ground fast in the direction of the sound, and the blind. In about 10 minutes, I see the camouflage netting strung up around the trees, found the blind. When we get closer the first thing I see is two large male fox tearing up an old Alice frame style rucksack. Instantly I recognize the screaming sound, anyone who knows the woods, knows what the fox actually says, and it isn't comforting. Once we get closer the critters realize we are there and take off like two bullets. I tell my teammates to stand back while I check out the area. Since the pack is there I figured our hunter may be deceased in the blind. First thing I notice, besides the torn up pack, is two large burlap sacks, still full, on the ground by the blind. The blind itself also seemed to be in horrible shape, all torn up. Leaves were kicked up and boot prints were in circles all around the spot. I counted 16 empty .303 cartridges on the ground only they were scattered, like someone was running in circles and shooting in all directions. Hunter isn't in the blind. I am starting to get confused, extremely confused. None of this adds up. I try my radio again and still, static. I dig out my cell phone and of course there is no signal. Backing away slowly the way I came. We are trained to preserve a scene like this in case it turns into a crime investigation, police I didn't don't like when we mess things up too much, and when I get back to my teammates I explain the situation and ask if any of them has cell signal as we need to inform command and police of the situation. Nothing works. I immediately take out my trusty notepad, jot everything I observed down, then take out the GPS and take a bearing with my compass, as does the other four. We are getting the hell out of Dodge now something is wrong. I don't tell them that but after I gave them the info I could tell we were all thinking it. It is now about 2 o'clock and we are going pretty fast. Jen asks to stop for a minute to check our bearing and I agree. I check and sure enough I am on course. Everyone else tells me I am wrong. We start to compare and turns out everyone's GPS is giving different info. Perfect, just what we need. I break out the map and take a peek. Triangulation is impossible because of the thick slash tall boreal type forest we are in. 
I tried to get a basic idea from the contour lines on the map as we were going slyly uphill. According to the map we should be going downhill back towards the road. Getting turned around like this isn't something I, or the rest of the team have been known to do. I chalk it up to the stress our minds are under. I tell everyone to stop, we need to rest for a while, eat, rehydrate and try to gather ourselves up. Once we are fed, military rations do nothing for morale, and have had plenty of water we decide to make a game plan. Everyone is looking at their map and compass. A few moments go by and we all compare notes on what the game plan is. GPS units still aren't getting a proper satellite feed and the radio is still nothing but static. Again everyone has different ideas, what the hell? Everyone rechecks their work and Kyle says we need to go north, and points. Jen instantly says yeah except north is the other way. I look at my compass and my north is in a different direction. We all take our compasses off our lanyards and put them on the ground a few feet away from each other and look. All five freaking compasses are pointing in different directions. I don't know what to say, or do, or think at this point. Finally I man up and say it, we are effing lost. That is right guys, search and rescue is effing lost. I've seen GPS fail many times, radios too but my compass is my failsafe. The only times they go wonky is when there is a large metal source nearby. Now shit really isn't right. First rule when lost? Stay where you are. They will either come looking for us, freaking embarrassing, or we will hear teams passing by, we couldn't have gotten that far off track. I pull out my pen flare anyway and fire three red flares in the air. Then each one of us has a go at blasting our Fox 40 whistles. Fast forward a few hours, 10 more flares, and so many whistle blasts our ears hurt. Sun is going down and it is cloudy as hell. Temp is already gone down to 5C and it was calling for rain tonight. Search mode equals off survival mode equals on. I tell the team it is time to build shelters and get prepared for a long shitty cold night. By the time we have two decent lentos made up and a fire in between them, it is dark. We all have our canteen cups propped to the side of the hot coals to make some hot drinks. We talk and chat and try to joke around for a few hours when we decide it is time to try to sleep. It already had started raining and was getting damp and chilly. Myself and Jen are under one lento, and Stephen, Sean, and Kyle are under the one opposite from us. We decide to have a fire watch to keep it burning and listen for any of the other teams that may be close. Our organization searches in the dark slash shitty weather unlike most. After an hour the person awake was supposed to wake the next, so on and so on until morning. I took the first watch, first is always better, you get to sleep longer, Kyle moved over to our lento and he and Jen laid head to toe. I was barely covered by what was left of the shelter. Getting wetter and colder by the minute. I decide to get off my ass and move around a little, the rain was slowing down and besides we needed more firewood. Shit, starts, two, freak, up. I am about 15 or 20 feet away from the lentos, breaking dead lower branches off black spruce. I hear this crash and a whole lot of screaming and cursing. After running back all I can see is two torn down shelters and my four searchers crawling out from under them. What the hell? I asked, knowing full well our shelters are almost bomb proof, we are trained to build them sturdy enough to resist hurricanes and such. Jen is freaking screaming and crying saying someone was here, someone was here. Kyle asked where the hell I was and I explained I was getting more wood, hence, fire watch. Jen was hysterical, the kind of hysterical where you can't get a straight answer out of them. After calming her down we got the full story. She had woken up suddenly with a sick feeling in her stomach and heard footsteps. She thought it was me walking around, when she hears a loud crack she rolled over and looked, in the firelight she said she saw the shape of an extremely large person pushing down on the main cross poles of the lentos, and in an instant the whole shelter was on top of her. Instantly I go into rage mode. I tell them to gather their gear, it was prob just some inbred out here screwing with us. After we get packed I search the area. No footprints, no broken ferns, nothing. Whoever it was is one stealthy bastard. Stephen keeps saying we need to stay put, our navigation and radio is still on the held side. I don't care. I assign everyone a number and tell them whenever I holler out one, they are to holler out their number in succession. 
we are going to spread out into a line and walk. My reasoning being if we are single file we can miss an old ATV trail or something. We all flip on our headlamps, mag lights in hand and start walking. After 100 paces I holler, 1. 2 comes from my left, Jen. 3 comes from further left, Kyle. 4. Still left, Sean. 5 left, Steven. Then, 4. From my right. This didn't sound human. It was like a sick moose was trying to talk with its throat cut. A gurgling disgusting sound, deep yet with a high-pitched ring to it. I don't even remember thinking, instantly my mag light and headlamp were pointed in the direction of the, voice. I don't know what the hell to call it. There was a person, tall, really freaking tall. Looking straight at me. He looked to be native, only at least 7 feet. He had on a camo hunting jacket but it was 10,000 sizes too small. His arms were unnaturally low, his hands almost reached his knees. Then I noticed one leg was at least a food longer than the other one. I shone my light in his face and I almost threw up. I can only describe it as the worst stroke victim I have ever seen. One side of his face looked fine, the other was almost melty. His right eye was at least three inches lower than the other one, the bottom lip hung below his chin. I'll admit it, I started screaming like a 10 year old little girl. I fell on my ass, that is how hard and loud I screamed. The goddamn thing's lip curled up, the side of the face that was fine extended almost to its freaking ear in the most disgusting unreal smile I could imagine. I heard everything running towards me, the thing dropped onto all fours and started freaking running like a goddamn cheetah through the bush. The rest were with me now asking me what the hell happened, was I alright, etc. Etc. I kept asking did they see it, did they freaking see it? None did but they said they heard the voice try to call out the number 4. Jen was chalk white again. Tears were running down her cheeks as she just stared at me. I got up and hugged her hard and she whispered in my ear I just want to go home. I loaded my pen flare with a bear banger, loud explosive projectile for scaring large animals, and tried the radio again. Still nothing. I said let's go no more side by side, we stay within arm's reach of one another. We power hiked full speed for what seemed like miles. The whole way branches were cracking all around us. We heard something running in all directions. What is worse is every now and then we would hear fo or in that same disgusting freaking voice over and over again. Each time we heard it, it sounded more human. Each freaking time it sounded more and more like Sean. I can't speak for the others but I was on the verge of throwing up from being so scared. I have never felt fear like that, didn't know it was possible to feel fear like that. The sun started coming up. The running sounds and breaking branches slowed down. We haven't heard the thing speak for almost an hour now. Sean stopped suddenly and said did you hear that? We all stopped and listened, it was a goddamn whistle. I blew back three times. Then the other whistle sounded off again. Oh thank god. All five of us started racing towards the sound as fast as we could. Still blowing my own whistle, as were the other four as we ran, we finally came upon a team of searchers. The leader, Dave, started asking us questions, were we alright, what happened, we lost contact with you, the command post couldn't pick up on our tracking radio to see where we were. Dave's, and my own, Radio suddenly came alive, scared the shit out of me. Team 4, we just picked up Team 1's signal, they are right on top of you, are they with you? Dave responded that we were alright and we were heading out. On the way I checked my GPS, as did the rest of my team. GPS working, compass working, radio working. Dave also informed me that they had found the hunter. Where at? I asked. He was at his deer blind unconscious but team 3 managed to wake him and he walked out with them. What? No, we were there, he wasn't there. I explained the ripped pack, the empty cartridges all over the ground and the half torn down blind. My team agreed with me, they didn't see the blind, but after the goddamn shit that happened I think they were just trying to fight off insanity, but Dave insisted that team 3 said the area was clear. It was only the hunter and his rifle. We got back and I went for my debriefing with my search manager and the commanding officer with the police. 
I left out the whole monster in the woods, shelters getting knocked down parts, but made it very clear the state that the hunting spot was in. Apparently Team 3 had pictures of the area while the hunter was gathering his wits before they left. The leaves weren't kicked around, the blind looked like it had been remade, there were no empty cartridges on the ground, the apples were in one pile on the ground and not in bags. They also kept insisting the hunter did not have a pack, nor was a torn up rucksack seen or reported. It still was wrong. We were safe but it was wrong. I left the command post and walked over to the ambulance where the hunter was. I was going to ask him if he was okay, and about the empty cartridges all over the ground. I know what I saw. When I rounded the corner of the ambulance there it was. That is the goddamn person I saw, only it looked right now. But that face. That jacket. I stood there wide-eyed for a minute when it opened its eyes, looked right at me, smiled and said four. Instant nope. Turned around, picked up my gear, went on the bus. My team and I sat together on the ride home, we never said a word the entire way. About an hour ago my search manager called me and told me the hunter was alright physically but after an evaluation at the hospital he was put into the psychiatric ward as he just wasn't acting right. They figure it is shock from exposure to the elements. Bull. Freaking. Shit. Did search and rescue effing take something out of the wilderness and put it into society where it doesn't belong? What the hell happened to the hunter? I know that thing is not human. Should I never sleep again? I grew up in the woods, but now I am freaking terrified to even think about going back in there. The thought of getting called for another search is making me almost piss myself. Hey X. Something really weird happened to me last night. I was in bed at 11 last night feeling really uneasy. I felt a strong presence in there with me and it didn't feel friendly but I didn't feel in danger. I was laying on my back and felt like something was standing over me so I rolled onto my stomach and spread out like a starfish. This is when the weird shit happened. I have an old metal bed frame that creaks when you sit on it. It started to creak as though someone was having sex, the headboard was hitting the wall and it felt like something was humping me. The noise would have been a lot louder if it was real but it was pretty light. I stayed still to make sure it wasn't me but the noise continued. I felt some pressure on my shoulders like someone was pushing me into the bed but I could still move and tried to shake it off me. The pressure was removed but something really strange happened next. I felt something touching me through my underwear like it was rubbing me or eating me out for like 5 minutes. It felt kinda like it would have if it was another person but I couldn't feel any body parts, only the motions and reactions my body was having. All of a sudden I could feel a big mass of energy or pressure going in and out of me like I was being penetrated. I stayed still the entire time with my eyes shut but my heartbeat was increasing and I could feel I was pretty wet. This happened for about 15 minutes and my body was close to orgasm. It honestly felt like I was being snuggled by something that wasn't there. I looked around and my room was empty but I could feel someone on top of me, it felt like it was kneeling on the bed straddling me from behind. It stopped before I came and I fell asleep before anything else happened. I asked my mother if she'd heard anything in my room and she said my bed was creaking until about 3.30 keeping her awake. What happened to me, X? Did I imagine this? People will troll this post but I'm looking for a serious explanation. I used to live in a small town in CT. There was a ferry that ran across the river, and I'd go there occasionally. Next to the ferry there was an older boatyard that had been abandoned. I used to ride by it as a kid. When I was 16, I decided to enter the yard. A friend I rode there. He was a puss and didn't go in, but I did. It was boring, a few rusted boats, a few hobo nests. I saw a building that looked pretty open, and went towards the door. As I got close, I saw a little china doll sitting on a pile of rubble. Everything else was dirty, rusty, old tools and magazines. The doll had some dirt spots on her dress, but her face was clean. I got spooked, and left. Walking back to my friend, I looked back at the building. The roof had fallen in, blocking the door. I noped back to my friend and we took off. There was another time I entered an abandoned building, but it's not as odd. 
My family has always been broke, so we never even had our own house. Instead we lived in my parents' parents' house. In my grandfather's house there is a long hallway that has three rooms. Two on the left and one the right. The two on the left is the bathroom and another one we called the storeroom. The storeroom had all the dusty old shit that no one uses. I will never forget this house. I lived in this house for two years, I think, when I was really young. My cousin also lives in the same house. My mom's parents are pretty rich, I never understood why she never asked them for money. So, anyway that long hallway ends where the third room is, on the right. And on the left is the way to the dining area. The corner of that hallway right next to the third room has a weird altar thing on the top. My grandfather is very religious, but I don't know what the hell that thing is on that altar. It was a doll that has long, curly brown hair wearing a fancy churchish robe. It has the creepiest face imaginable. Round, brown eyes, fat cheeks, and a subtle smile. It stands right in the middle of that altar thing with two candle things on its sides. When the lights are all turned off, the lights on the altar thing are on and illuminates the doll's face. It really looked weird, it just looked like a toy with some lights. It didn't look like a religious symbol that I can take seriously. However, it was very unsettling to look at. The house itself is pretty damn big. When it's night and I have to take a piss, I have to take a long walk down all the stairs, into the long hallway, past the storeroom and into the bathroom. The only other bathroom in the house was inside my grandparents' bedroom. At night, I would have to walk in the total darkness through the hallway because the light switch for it is all the way on the other side. When I'm done using the bathroom, I have to walk through the hallway again, facing the glowing altar in the center. It's hard not to look in the weird doll's eyes because it's dead in the middle and its face is glowing. It's very unsettling to me because I was a coward when I was little. I hated looking at the doll every time. I sometimes look down instead of straight ahead but that only made me more nervous because I know it's right in front of me. On my grandfather's lawn there is another altar with another figure in it, it's not a doll but a statue. I think it's the Virgin Mary or something. So this confused me, because the altar inside the house is different from the one outside. My cousin who was only a year older than me was also scared of that doll thing in the hallway, but we never asked our grandpa about it. My grandfather acts pretty strange at times. Every time he sees me and my cousin he would give us a kiss and it would smell like cigarettes and beer every time. That was the thing that my grandfather did the most. Just sitting in the living room or outside, smoking. Also, drinking. Grandpa is usually calm but whenever he gets angry, it's scary. When a composed man you respect so much suddenly loses it, it really is disturbing. We had a housemaid, sounds fancy but she was just like an older friend who would do the housework. Sometimes, my grandpa would yell really loud at her whenever she messes something up. My grandpa has such a weird behavior, sometimes being quiet and then raging out of nowhere. Eventually our housemaid quit, there is no way she was fired. I know for a fact that she quit. My grandpa's weirdness was really apparent the longer I stayed there. Sometimes, he would be really really nice to my grandma and then in a few seconds he would be saying really mean things to her, sometimes even to us. His movements sometimes are really strange too. I know it doesn't sound that bad when you read this, but you have to have seen it yourself to understand. You know, when you feel like something is not right, that's what I felt when I was around him. Was he just one of those bipolar people or was he just crazy? Why is there a weird doll thing in that hallway? I'm sorry if you were expecting a scary climax. This is a true story and I didn't want to exaggerate anything. It's 3 AM in the morning and I need some sleep. I think I'm missing a bunch of stuff. This all happened a long time ago. I'll type this up and repost it tomorrow maybe. I have suffered from a strange deja vu my whole life. I would dream a moment and then have it flash in front of my eyes as I reach the moment in my life. These moments are usually inconsequential and without meaning. Except in the moment the deja vu hits I also see myself die. Rarely is it a horrible death. Most times it seems as if I am suffering from some infliction and it claims me. I have seen heart attacks, asthma attacks and some frankly silly accidents. 
There have been times the death was horrific, unusual, or just plain bat bueno insane. One incident that refuses to leave me involves my second wedding day. I was sitting down looking up at the stage by the dance floor when it hit me. Suddenly the building was dilapidated and dirty. A great pain is racking my body and there are strange horrific creatures around me. I can see five but I know there are more. They begin to tear me apart using tooth and claw, pain rack my body and as darkness begins to swallow me one enters directly into my sight and stares at me. It was dog-like but with rotten flesh with some bone being visible behind the rot. Its teeth were sharp and a greenish hue. The snout was not long maybe a couple of inches. The thing lacked ears I could see but did have tufts of fur on the less rotten skin. I see those damn dogs in my nightmares on occasion. I still have the occasional deja vu moment as well but this was the creepiest one. Be me five years ago. Talking about ghosts on grandma's house with my uncle. House built really close to place where a woman was supposedly killed. Area is remote, rumors of sightings from locals. Uncle lives there, says has seen shadow people, glowing eyes looking through window, and heard weird noises. Outside at night. Ghost hunt declared. Wait till 3 AM, turn off all electronics and lights. Few minutes later room starts getting darker and colder. Light coming from outside from window. White semi-transparent curtains installed. Gets so dark that I can't see my hand in front of my face but look at window and see outside perfectly, light still coming in. Terry's a tall mirror with its own stand in the room. I see shadow move from behind it a few feet. Left to right from my perspective. Shadow turns and faces us. I ask, are you seeing that? Reply is yes. Nope. Shadow keeps moving through wall, few seconds it comes back exactly how it went. With staring and everything. Goes back behind mirror. Lights and room temperature go back to normal. Hey, whatever. I'll post a brief story before going to sleep. So both my parents used to clean this high school slash film school. The building was pretty old. It used to be a radio station in the 70s or something like that. Well lots of stuff happened to them while they worked there. There's the classic minor stuff such as lockers shutting and hearing people running on the second floor even though the entire school is empty. But the biggest things that happened mostly to my mom was that she would always see this figure staring down at her from the second floor whenever she'd clean the lobby. My mom says you could barely see a face except some dark, red eyes and he wore a cape and a hat. Also. Another time my mom said that when she was putting away the supplies in the closet she turned and looked to the stairs and saw a freaking child crawling up them. Needless to say, my mom noped the hell out of there and left the school early that day. My mom and dad talked to a lot of the teachers there and they said that they always felt something was off about that school. One of the teachers even said he had seen the same cape figure that my mom saw. Yep that school was weird. I went to the basement one time and there was a bunch of old radio equipment and dim lights that gave it a creepy but cool atmosphere. Well I'm done with my terribly written account of my parents' experiences. Hopefully this thread stays alive for the next 10 hours and I'll tell some of the better stories my dad has told me. So I guess this is where I dump my experience. I have two other brothers, we all grew up with our family on a farm in Outback NSW, Australia jump on quad bikes one night to go adventuring on our property which is huge as we were bored and we wanted to have a small ride. We get about halfway into our property which is surrounded by mostly trees and bush along with our livestock which is allowed to roam free. Come to an area which is kind of flat so we park our bikes there and leave on the headlights and watch the sky for shooting stars. Noise on our left gets me to swivel my bike's light, it shines on a cow that is on the ground and something eating from his stomach. It's gray in color with a fair build to it, size of an average male, sharp incisor-like teeth and large irradiant green eyes, it looks at us with meat and blood dripping from its mouth. It lets out a small girl-like cry, we are scared shitless, Marcus, my twin, does the dumbiest thing possible and picks up and sticks slowly and throws it just in front of the creature, it looks at him then the stick then back to him quickly deciding what to do next. My youngest brother Noah picks up a rock and hurls it to the far left of us making the thing stop watching Marcus and get up, look into the bush and run off with a screech. 
Safe to say we pissed ourselves but we didn't care, we rode hard and fast home to get away from it. It's been five years but a friend convinced me to put my story here, the creature is called a rake. It's hard to describe what it was but believe me, after research it seems we were lucky to escape with our lives. B. Halloween, 2012 Going with a large group of friends to local cemetery. Cemetery equals Concordia Cemetery, El Paso, Texas. Sneak into the graveyard around 9 p.m., and begin to look around. Head into all different sections of the cemetery, seeing as how it was rather large. Pretty cold, pretty dark, and the place smelled like shit. Be there for close to four hours or so. Finally decide to pack up and leave since we couldn't find anything. As we're exiting the way we entered, a friend of mine trips over something protruding from the ground. As we pull the object out of the ground, we find that it is a jar, full of stinky purple shit. All a bit freaked out at this point, seeing as how there is a doll inside of the jar. Begin to hear some strange noises further into the cemetery, accompanied by some strange laughs. Reminded me of the Conker sisters from Ed Ed and Eddie, not important. Friend of mine who is extremely Mexican, and very familiar with the situation, stated that the laughs were coming from Mexican witches, and that we needed to GTFO. We GTFO. Post picture on slash x slash later that night, and get some info. Info. In the Blair Witch, Josh's stuff was covered in a blue slash purple slime and he went missing. According to Puritan Christianity of the Middle Ages and the Malives Maleficarum, witches used different ointments for all sorts of things. 2. The color purple is used to calm, or make at ease. Either the person in the picture was a very violent person in life, or maybe died a very violent death, my guess. Personally being from El Paso as well, I know how people are in central slash downtown area. Very into spiritualism and shit like that. 3. Clearly a binding spell, I say, treat it with the same reverence that you would any object in a graveyard, you have no idea what the spell is holding back because it's someone else's business. 4. Bottle spells that are disposed of in cemeteries are exclusively bad shit. You put it in the graveyard because it's too noxious for your own backyard and you hate it too much to put it at a crossroads, you want it buried and dead. Whoever put this there should have been more cautious with it. As to its contents, it could be goofer dust or freak knows what, which might include as someone said bodily fluids, sulfur or freaking anything potentially, it really recommend not freaking with it. 5. Though as in looking at it, it seems almost like a redundancy system almost. A soul bottle is used to house the soul of a person inside, the soul inside can be tortured to reveal secrets, and if it wanted, can reach out and speak to anyone that comes in contact with it. The thing inside of the jar, is a secondary binding, note the rope that covers the eyes and mouth. Whoever put that there, doesn't want it knowing what's going on, or have the ability to reach out to anything. Just stuck senseless inside the bottle. Just my two cents, but yeah. 2 days ago I was on shift doing a patrol at a hospital for children. I walked past a patient's window and saw a man standing beside the bed of a sleeping kid that looked really malnourished. I was on the oncology unit, so I assumed he looked like that because of chemo. Anyway, as I walked by the man looked up at me. There was a little section of wall between the window and the door. Since the man was looking at me, I continued looking into the room for a few steps. The section of wall was cleared in one step, then I shed a brick because the man was gone and the kid was wide awake and staring at me with his eyes so freaking wide it looked like they were about to pop out. Needless to say I just completely disregarded it until such a time when I could post it on the internet where someone may believe me. A few years ago, I was with some friends walking through this alleyway with a school on the left, and a giant field that the school used on the right. It wasn't night or anything, probably around late afternoon. We were walking, talking and I just remember looking ahead, and seeing these two old guys holding on to this little boy and they are staring out into the field. The little kid looks at me, and he's grinning like an idiot and he pulls his hand from one of the mans, and he beckons us to follow or something and then the gate opens, and they walk inside onto the asphalt and then field. 
Me and friends looked at each other whiffing, because the gate was locked, there was no way they would have been able to unlock it, and lock it again since we were only a few feet away. As we continued walking down the alleyway towards the woods, we talked about what the hell just happened, since we had all witnessed the same freaking strange thing I remember hearing a little kid scream and uck, I got the most horrible shivers, and noped the hell out of there. Be about 5 years old. Sleeping in my brother's room. Wake up in the middle of the night facing the doorway. MFW when I see a person standing there. No discernible features. Just kinda standing there looking into the room. Force myself back to sleep even though scared shitless. Next morning tell my brother. He said he saw the same thing. Never talk about it again. 13 years later and nothing like that has happened again. Around 6 years old. Live in Victorian townhouse. Lying in bed. Feel very cold, very cliche stuff. Feel like I'm being watched from my shelf. It's filled with toys but I feel each one is staring at me. I see something slide from one side of the shelf and off the other. Sleep with my head under the covers the rest of the night. We were actually later told by the previous owners that the house was in fact haunted. A child died of pneumonia in the attic rooms which were originally a nursery. I remember feeling especially spooked when I went up there alone. All right, I'll share. B22. Be in the process of moving out. Every night when I start to drift off to sleep, while I'm in the hypnagogic state, I hear an old lady calling for help. Help me. I've fallen. I'm so cold. Etc. Every time, it wakes me straight up, heart pound, adrenaline pumping. Can't sleep, oh, bottle of Jim Beam, what should I do? JB, bitch, get the shot glass. Dose myself into oblivion on a nightly basis to sleep, deal with the hangover the next day, shit sucks. Finally get the last load in the U-Haul. Neighbor comes up to me, must be a relief to get out of here, it must have been creepy since the woman behind you died? Wah? In the apartment behind yours. Didn't you hear about it? Oh God, have I been drunkenly blocking out a dying woman's cries for help? No, I've been too busy running back and forth to hear the gossip. When did it happen? Two weeks ago. Days before I started hearing the calls for help, F this gay earth and this haunted apartment, I'm out. Haven't had problems since. Rented a farmhouse for a few years. Family graveyard in the front. Pretty creepy but nothing we could do about it. House is scary as freak. Hear voices all the time. Dark red light on outside all night. First floor looks like the aim gate to hell. One night we hear wind chimes. My brother and I ask our mom when got them. She looks at us like we're idiots. Says she never got wind chimes. Suddenly hear children laughing. Two miles from the nearest house. At 2 a.m. Look around. It's clear that we all heard it. Everything is silent for a second before we hear another noise. It's coming from my brother's room. Go there as a group since we're all scared as freak. It sounds like one toy at the bottom of the pile is going off. Dig around until we find my brother's Pokemon calculator repeatedly saying Pikachu try to turn it off. Pikachu. Try again. Pikachu. Say screw it and take out the batteries. Pikachu. We freak out and take the thing outside. Throw it in the empty oil drum where we keep the dead squirrels. Set the whole thing on fire. Hear children laugh one more time before everything stops. We all stay home the next day. There were other things that happened in that old house, but that was by far the worst of it. I was so freaking happy when we moved. B February. Aunt had a heart attack? Same night, grandmother had a stroke. Kept telling us Aunt Nancy is having a baby and kept asking us who was in the closet and who was standing by us in the room. Ask me if I saw the people. What people? In her mental state, couldn't break the news to her that aunt was dying. Grandmother passes away. Aunt miraculously recovers from heart attack, 
leaves hospital three days later, finds out she has stage 4 terminal lung cancer. Getting ready for grandmother's funeral, see a dove on my balcony. Grandmother loved doves. Weird to see doves since it is the winter. At grandmother's funeral, have priest hold his hand on aunt's forehead asking to stop her pain. Aunt passes away that night. Get ready to go to aunt's funeral. See two doves on balcony. For some reason, feel connection to these doves. Get close to glass to watch them. Open the door to my balcony, doves stand there. Walk out on porch, doves stand there. Get up close enough to touch them, doves still do not move. Sit outside with doves for a long time, doves walk back and forth on porch. Eventually have to leave for the funeral. Doves still on porch as I close the door. Tears.jpg Maybe not paranormal or too spooky, but the doves are definitely something I can't explain. I haven't forgotten about what my grandmother said to me about a month before her stroke when she was still healthy. Out of the blue, she just asks me, do you ever see people? These people, they never talk. They just stand there. They are well dressed and they just, stand there, do you see them sometimes? Young men and women in nice clothes. But they never talk. Too spooky for me. B 15 year old me. Staying at my dad's because mom was out of town. Watching Harold and Kumar go to White Castle late at night because bored. The lights aren't on, but I'm sitting straight up. Not tired, always been a night owl. Lost track of time, look into kitchen where there is a clear path to the microwave that has a clock. Kitchen is dark besides clock light from microwave. Slightly above and to the left of the microwave is this black, darker than night, thing, for lack of a better word. Looks kind of like a black superhero cape flailing in the wind. Cape looking thing slowly goes past microwave clock. Numbers begin to disappear. 12 colon 0, 12, 1, can't see clock for a second or so, then. 1, 12, 12 colon 0, 1203, sitting there, numb, thinking what the hell was that? Get up, investigate kitchen. Nothing. More what the hells. Go back to living room, turn off movie and lay there thinking about it for hours. Woke up the next morning and told my dad about it. MFW he tells me he thinks the house is haunted. He's been hearing footsteps up his wooden stairs that only make noise when somebody walks up them, and caught glimpses of a shadow going from room to room. Fall asleep in chair at computer. Vaguely become aware of a dream in progress. Sitting with friend in his truck talking about God knows what. Not talking normally but with our minds telepathic like. Hard to explain. Friend of mine is an interesting character IRL. I'll leave it at that. I'm asking all sorts of questions to my friend. Can't remember specifics, things get weird and very fast in our mind talk. It's like multiple questions are being asked slash answered simultaneously. All thoughts are happening to fast, can't process or understand anything that is being communicated. Everything stops and there is one final very clear thought that pops in my head. All questions will be answered. Hearing this triggered something inside of me. I suddenly shot up in my chair going into a very erect posture and felt what I can only describe as a light bulb turning on in my head. It was like someone turned the power switch on in my brain and it was firing on all cylinders. Felt a moment of like super awareness when suddenly I start vibrating. This is no weak little vibration. It comes on almost instantly and so intense. It felt like every atom, every cell in my being was violently being ripped apart and I would evaporating into the nothingness around me. Wish I could describe better how insanely powerful and visceral this feeling was. Something in me gets terrified and I immediately tense up slash clench my whole body. Tensing up pulls me together and ends the vibrations quickly and I open my eyes. Holy shit JPG. I still wonder what would have happened if I didn't tense the hell up, cause holy shit that was insane. Just realized there was a paranormal board on 4chan, so going to tell you about my single UFO experience which freaks me out to this day. If anyone has any info or has saw anything like this, let me know. Interested to get your takes on it. Sorry about terrible diagram, not a photoshopper. Four years ago. 
driving on holiday in Scotland with my dad. Was winter and extremely dark even though only around 10 p.m., very rural setting, no other cars visible. Passing small airfield, think the name was Macroninish or something similar. Suddenly out of nowhere bright floodlight like light appears to the left of the car. Is attached to a massive triangle shaped thing. Thing is totally black and looks smooth. Extremely thin, looks like a flat triangle but bent in a weird non-symmetrical way, not down the middle. Is huge. Me and dad both panic, feel very freaked out by it. Speed up until we've passed it. Both agree that it was the weirdest thing we've ever seen, no idea what it was. Dad has refused to talk about it since, very defensive about it. Still freaks me out. Anybody ever seen anything like that? Can try and draw in a better picture if need be but not got great paint skills. I was seven at the time and my family and I had been living in this house for two years. The whole time we lived there a mysterious shadow like arm and hand would reach out of an upper cabinet space in our kitchen, me, my mom, my dad, my uncles and other guests all saw it through the reflection in our television when it was off. The cabinet the arm would reach out of and essentially wiggle around from would always remain open no matter what it couldn't be closed. My dad, who was a respectable hobbyist carpenter, whom built and remodeled several homes tried to repair the cabinet door to close L, even bought it new hinges, sanded certain areas etc. Anyways nothing would work. It stayed open and the hand was there every day. If you turned around the arm would suck back into the cabinet. My family tried to play games to catch it. One would look into the TV as the other one swiftly turned toward the cabinet and looked at it. As this happened the person looking at the reflection would see the arm suck itself back into the cabinet. BTW scared myself shitless writing this down. I had something similar happen. Got a new iPod for Christmas, is 10. Hell yeah music FTW. Have it setting on counter, cabinet comes down from the ceiling. Take picture and send a family to show off. See something odd in reflection. Stomach drops through my anus with the force of a thousand suns. Looks like someone's upper body twisting out of the cabinet, body turned at weird angle. Face was disfigured and scared, had what looked like bone protruding from head. Cabinet is to my back as I look at picture. Nope out of my house till mom gets home. Hey slash x slash. The kids are back in school and the tarot reading and demon summoning slash ask a magician anything morons that ruin this board are slowly being weeded out. So in the spirit of actual relevant posts being back sooner rather than later, let's get a personal experience thread going. Preferably recent experiences that are still fresh in your mind, as opposed to childhood experiences that sometimes are odd natural occurrences seen as supernatural to a young mind. I'll of course be courteous enough to start. I've posted a story about a month ago pertaining to my new house and how the bathroom in particular seems to have some sort of activity, such as the sliding doors opening on their own, in turn waking me up to actually witness it abruptly stop moving. But due to recent events I think there's cause to believe there is something in my house, that tends to prefer that room. Going back to before we moved in two months ago, we had an apartment in Indianapolis, Florida. I'm currently waiting on my buddy to finish remodeling his master bedroom, so I moved out of his house temporarily and back with my father. He goes out of town twice a month for a week for work, and I watch over the house. He had just gotten approved by the VA for a home loan and bought the house we now live in Indian Harbor Beach, literally right down the street. Since we lived in an apartment I had no room to do my daily workout, so I'd usually go to the public football slash soccer field for jogging, and all the basic weight free workouts you can do. But seeing as my dad bought a house with a backyard, we were waiting for him to come back from his trip before moving in. I used the key he left and went to the new house for my workout. I did a walkthrough as I had never had time to check it out with my dad as I worked two jobs. Pleasantly surprised at the sparkling new condition of everything in the house, I began opening doors to all the rooms to decide which one I would temporarily own. I mostly wanted it because the other room that is on the other side of the bathroom, yes they're connected by a bathroom, 
it's called a Jack and Jill bathroom, had a regular wood door, but also big glass double doors that left much to be desired as far as privacy goes. So while inspecting the room I went into the bathroom, shut the sliding door behind me, and opened the one to the other room, went in and shut the other door behind me. I then walked out the double doors and shut them, and went outside to the backyard to start my workout. Afterwards I planned on taking a shower and had brought a towel and body wash. So I went to the bathroom through the double door room and stopped in my tracks. Both sliding doors were completely open. They don't glide super easily by any means and the house is completely level. So I decided to shrug it off since all the doors were locked and I knew nobody was in the house. After the shower, I went out to the hallway and went to leave. A closet door was open that hadn't been. It's small and has a single light bulb that didn't work and as I was looking up at the bulb, I saw the entrance to the attic. With the plank that seals it over halfway open. I was upset and thought a squatter may have been in my dad's new house and though I was completely unarmed I turned my cell phone flashlight on, and used the shelves as a ladder and peeked up in the attic. It was cleaner than expected and not very creepy at all, thank god. From where I could see every corner. There was nothing to be seen anywhere. I just left and decided to forget about it. Fast forward to moving day and meeting my neighbors. They're very nice and social, and talk to us every time we run into each other outside. They met me my cousin who helped us move, and my dad. Fast forward a month. Dad's out of town and I'm leaving for work in the morning and I'm pretty late and in a hurry. I had left the garage light on all night on accident as I had done laundry pretty late. He was taking his trash can back in and said while he was walking his dogs around 2 am last night he said he was surprised I let my little sister stay up so late and play in the garage, which has huge windows facing the street so you can basically see the entire inside of it at night with the light on. He asked why he never met her before and I just thought he was messing around and kinda laughed and said have a good day. He of course looked confused as I backed out of the driveway, as someone would when you completely ignore a question they asked in all seriousness. Over the past couple weeks the bathroom doors sometimes wake me up from sliding open and banging once they open completely, and there's never anyone there. Which leads me to last night around 7pm when I got back from work. My neighbor was sitting out in his driveway with his wife and dogs having a couple beers. They invited me and I of course accepted. After some small talk he said something that freaked me out, and still has me looking over my shoulder every minute. My bathroom oddly enough has a tall window right behind the toilet facing the fence in our backyard on the side of the house. Over the fence you can clearly see into his garage. He said he saw my little sister watching him from the bathroom window paint some trim for his walls. He said he waved at her and smiled but she just kept staring at him. And then he said she started to make him nervous as she didn't go away, so he closed up shop and went inside. I asked if he had been drinking that day and he said not at all, it was only noon and he never has a drink before dinner, and asked why I asked. I told him that I didn't have a little sister. Surprisingly he just said, well that explains why she looks so so much like the old neighbor's daughter. Looks like you've got yourself a ghost. And he and his wife laughed it off. So apparently a little ghost girl lived here before too and he thought it was the old neighbor's daughter. I'm glad they found it so funny, but I have to be here alone for another week. And last night as I was pulling in the garage light came on by itself. So it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Well that's my story. Let's hear all of yours slash x slash.